so hello everyone good evening uh, today I wanted to explain about uh, some uh, basic things uh, about onboarding 2.0 and I think uh, last time I have given you about uh, that if anyone wants to learn onboarding 2.0 I told you that employee central is uh, a prerequisite right so the same way when you learn onboarding 2.0 um, you know we have some prerequisites that uh, you know you should be aware about all these functionalities right for example the first thing is uh, generic objects and I'm sure that most of you know about uh, generic objects because the employee central architecture is consisting of uh, different types of objects and uh, one of the kind of objects are generic objects right so here that means what do you understand MDF because generic objects you are going to manage control configure any of your custom requirement through metadata framework which is an extensibility platform so now when you work in onboarding 2.0 so the generic objects is also a prerequisite since employee central is a prerequisite now you can see since you know employee central so handling of uh, generic objects for onboarding 2.0 is not going to be a difficult thing why do we need this actually for example uh, you know custom data collection let us say an example see whenever you want to collect the custom data collection maybe you may not remember one more thing that whatever the custom data collection that you are going to do that won't be available or that cannot be integrated again with employee central so custom data collection or employee data collection that is only for onboarding 2.0 data management only for example let us say uh, parking details suppose if you are opting for parking car parking or bike parking so you can specify your own choice so that means what you need to do you need to create a custom object for your custom data collection for your on body so that is why the generic objects a prerequisite and employee central v2 so employee central also that uh, should be enabled as a prerequisite and as you all know that by default uh, recruitment management also should be enabled for onboarding 2.0 but even without uh, recruitment management um, you know you can also initiate external uh, candidates manually also it's not like every time the candidate external candidate has to pass from uh, recruitment management to uh, uh, onboarding 2.0 so you can also manually hire adding the external candidates manually directly in onboarding 2.0 system so home page because you're onboarding 2.0 uh, you know maybe as a hiring manager or maybe as a uh, let us say on body maybe let us say as a internal hire whoever it may be so you need to uh, complete all the tasks right so what you know every time a, pa a particular task is being initiated so on your home page on your v3 home page uh, which is a default landing page on your success factor system so your corresponding hiring managers will be able to experience tiles related to onboarding 2.0 on the home page so that is why home page is very very important and uh, as you all know that onboarding 2.0 when you work succession data model is very very important thing it is going to play because for internal hire for your employee onboarding data model and even for internal uh, onboarding uh, let us say uh, data model you are going to handle it directly through succession data model but you don't need to touch the succession data model you can directly do it from manage business configuration via admin center so like uh, you know you uh, what you call as a best practice when you're going to map a data you know from a recruitment from employee central to recruitment for internal hire for external hiring so you need to create onboarding data uh, you know data model uh, directly through managed business configuration 
so you can map it but when you map the data as a best practice you have to make sure the fields from employee central should be always specified as a mandatory and uh, as a best practice you should always uh, try to specify at least least restrict to mandatory fields because if you make every mandatory field and again at the time of uh, uh, mapping so you are going to experience a lot of uh, uh, errors when you validate uh, the field mappings and all so like that if you go and talk a lot of things we have so you can you can manage your onboarding data model and there is a, a particular section but here when you handle uh, onboarding 2.0 configurations through manage business configuration it always recommends as a best practice i think it is a personal info hras element a job info hras element comp info hras element these are the uh, best practices that hras elements that you are going to work but even you know one more uh, thing that you can also configure a country specific requirements also you can do you know like variant fields that you can also map it and uh, uh, like effective data uh, data platform so that's also another uh, uh, prerequisite effective data data platform as you all know that uh, when you work in employee central we have uh, effectively dated entities some of the objects uh, some of the objects are non effectively dated entities as you all know that effectively dated entities means whatever the system that whatever the changes that you are going to make over a period of time the system is going to store the historical records over a period of time with the past the present and with the future dates so like that if you see i have given you few of the things that where it mostly requires uh, when you work in onboarding 2.0 and as a prerequisite and you can see there are a lot of things like document management service like your document generation as you all know that you have learned from our classes that how to work on the document generation and even when you were enable some of the employee central uh, functionalities and a provisioning the attachment manager is a prerequisite you know and here also you can also attach some of the files and uh, you can also enable the attachment manager as a prerequisite for your onboarding 2.0 like your dependent management that's also one of the module in employee central and uh, print form uh, generation people profile and i'm sure everyone is aware and you can see here intelligent services and you can set up this also a business process engine bpe on in ui so you can check all that uh, whether an employee is being passed from uh, uh, when you initiated or when a, when you initiated onboarding 2.0 uh, or any external employee whether a successfully the employee is being processed to the let us say manage pending hire so you can verify every single functionality uh, that you are going to perform on onboarding 2.0 uh, through bpa engine you know business process uh, engine directly on ui okay so uh, these are all the things that i wanted to explain that which are required for onboarding 2.0 as a prerequisites uh, for your successful configuration of your onboarding 2.0 functionalities right so i hope uh, it's clear to everyone and i hope it gives us some kind of idea for a better understanding about uh, setting up your onboarding 2.0 for a proper uh, configurations so i request you all go through it and hope it may helps you a better way thank you so much bye everyone see you all again next time